So we're up to the sixth day of creation in the integrated curriculum. And I'm going to share with you some of the materials available that you can use to pull out of the sixth day. There are essentially three items that we're going to look at. One is vegetation, including trees. And we're going to look at animals and then the human body. Those are the three items that come out of the sixth day of creation. Over here, you've got wild animals of Tanakh, um, Chayos Tanakh. It's an excellent resource, very, very simple, and it's provided by telephone number 03-958-4740. Uh, it's done by Shalom Advertising, and it's www.holylandguides.com. Email is kald, kald, at netvision.net.il. So you have here... A um, number of the different biblical animals from the Torah. If you want something that's even more comprehensive than that, uh, you would go to the Torah Encyclopedia of the Animal Kingdom. And this is uh, volume one of the highest wild animals of the Torah. And it's written by uh, Rabbi Slifkin, uh, a zoologist, a veritable zoologist himself. And you have Zehadava. These are animals of the Torah. This is provided by... Which press, sorry, excuse me one second while I tell you who wrote this. Uh, oh, this is the same Rabbi Pinchas uh, Preswerski who did birds in the Torah. This is animals of the Torah. And you will find that this is by Dishon Press. I think it's Dishon Press. If you want more information, um, you would actually go to... Hmm, I'm sorry, I don't see a specific... Oh, it's by Pinchas Preswerski. So I hope you can, you can find it by just looking at the picture here. You'll find it online. You'll just Google it. Here's Animals of the Bible. This is also from Palfot. We sh I showed you there um, other pictures from birds. So, so these are animals of the Bible from the lion to the snail. Again, it's beautifully illustrated. Really, really uh, sharp pictures. Brief description of each one of these animals. If you, if you want the best possible experience of what I'm describing to you here, then I will tell you, you have to go to Rabbi Deutsch's Living Tower Museum in Brooklyn, New York. There you will see literally every single animal. You will see every single animal in the entire Tanakh stuffed. Um, and you also see every single snake and reptile uh, the Shratzim of the Torah. He actually has also, this is from the Living Torah Museum. This actually belongs from the fifth day. This is a grasshopper. Uh, this is actually a kosher grasshopper. Um, I can't show you all the details now, but it has all the criteria for a kosher grasshopper. The um, extra legs to bounce from, pounce from, and also the wings cover uh, the, almost the entire body of, the, of this grasshopper. Um, he, here is what he claims to be the Seira. This also belongs on the fifth day, I beg your pardon. But in the Torah, Muse Torah Living Museum, look what resource you have. <laughs> you have here Animals of the Torah, Volume 1. Animals of the Torah, Volume 2. Animals of, vol of the Torah, Volume 3. <laughs> All from Rabbi uh, Deutsch of the Living Time Museum. Volume 1 of uh, Animals in Tanakh. Uh, the, and it, this is only those which have one of the two, one of the four simonim of a kosher animal. Um, here you have volume two of uh, Tanakh animals with one simon. Here you've got animals of Tfila, volume one. Animals of Tfila, volume two. Animals of Tfila, volume three. Animals of Tfila, volume four. You've got a lot of resources here. Animals of Nevi'im, volume one. Animals of the Mishnah, volume 1 and 2. That's number 1, that was number 2. Animals of the Talmud, volume 1. Animals of the Talmud, volume 2. Animals of the Talmud, volume 3. <laughs> animals of the Talmud, volume 4. And animals of, of the Talmud, volume 5. And volume 6. Oh, and volume 7. Uh, volume 8, oh my gosh. And volume 9. Volume 10, volume 11. 
So you've got 11 volumes, G DVDs, on animals of the, of the Gemara, of the Talmud. Here, volume one of animals of Kinus, and volume, uh, that's also volume one, I beg your pardon. So there's a lot of resources from Rabbi Deutsch of the Living Torah Museum on animals, and this is all produced from a Torah perspective. So you've also got the, the Jewish World of Wonders, and this again is on animals by the same Ephraim Harari that I described earlier. And this is from Israel Bookshop Press. Make sure you've got that. And you've also got Exploring the Wild World of Animals, same Rabbi Ephraim Harari. There's several volumes. I don't, I'm not sure that I have all of them. I believe they may be up to four or five by now. This is a very well written and carefully researched book, Signs of Life. And it refers, of course, to the synonym of kosher animals. It's extremely well illustrated. And it shows you the different hooves and the synonym for chewing the cud, etc. Excuse my bookmark there. Of kosher animals. Absolutely fascinating. Very clearly illustrated and very clearly written as well for young children. And OU produced another DVD here on kosher meat. The Unexplored Frontiers, and this is with Rabbi Yisrael Belsky of Blessed Memory, um, who is a super expert in actually astronomy and zoology, ecology, and um, uh, almost every secular subject that would otherwise be called secular, he was brilliant. Um, and a, and a, a real Torah authority in all those areas. So whatever he produced is, is super reliable. Here is from the same Nature in Israel series, Mammals of Eretz Yisrael. So this is a pocket guide of mammals that can be found uh, in Eretz Yisrael. And again, it's a fold out. So you've got all these animals here. And then on the back, a continuation. It's a very brief description for each animal or reptile. And or these are mammals. And a great platform for children to then do further research. But since it starts off as one of the animals, or mammals in this case, in Eretz Yisrael, um, you're endearing the children that much more. Here is similar to what I showed you earlier. This is a pocket version of Perek Shira, um, produced by Art School, I believe. And this, I'm just opened up this page to the scorpion and how it praises Hashem and thanks Hashem. And the Shira, the song of the snake, the Nachash. Pitoin in Lashna Kodesh is a python. Um, this is for younger children by Tuvia, oh sorry, Tsivia Yanovsky. Take me to the zoo. And this is on lions, elephants, snakes, in the medrash and in nature. So there's, there's beautiful materials coming out um, from veritable terrace sources that really helps us uh, be endeared to these, these topics from a terror perspective. Rabbi Slifkin, um, has written about, uh, this is a title is called Man and Beast, Our Relationship with Animals in, in uh, Halacha and in Jewish Thought, in Hashkafa. And another book here is on the camel hair and the hyrax. This is, goes through the laws of the animals with only one of the two kosher, one of, one of, the, one of the four kosher signs um, of a, one of the four animals that only has one of the two signs necessary, not four signs, sorry. One, uh, this is going through those four animals which only have one sign of the two signs of a kosher animal. Chew the cud and cloven hoofs. So that's a fascinating work in of itself. The OU also put out, and this has to do with trees and, and foliage, uh, when you're checking vegetables. This is uh, on insect-free, a guide to home vegetable inspection. This is an important subject because uh, there are many lavim in the Torah uh, against eating Flying insects and creepy crawly insects, uh, water insects, it's all in Tariq Mitzvahs as well. But this is a great resource for uh, using plants, trees, and foliage uh, to, uh, and vegetation, veg vegetables, to learn about Badikas Taloyim, to check how to check um, uh, for insects in vegetables. Um, here's another publication, also from the OU. Oh, this is Mechaf K, sorry. Uh, Keeping Vegetables Kosher. It's a guide to Badikas Taloyim. Um, it's an excellent guide, very simply written, with lovely simple illustrations, and how, how to check each one of those vegetables. Um, here is Trees and Shrubs of Eretz Yisrael, also by Nature in Israel series. And again, it's just beautifully illustrated, simple pictures of trees and shrubs in Eretz Yisrael. 
I should get, tell you where you can get this one. This is taken from mm, mm, mm. Talatuli, spelled T A L I T U L Y, at Zahav, Z Z A H A V, at, uh, sorry, dot net dot il. Talatuli at Zahav dot net dot il. Uh, that's where you will find the, these series. Excellent. And they're beautifully illustrated, very simple, easy for children. And then you've got wildflowers of Eretz Yisrael. This is so beautiful, this series, because uh, it's just simply done and beautifully illustrated and easy to go through each one. So these are different flowers in Eretz Yisrael. Did you know that Eretz Yisrael uh, exports flowers to Holland? <laughs> Believe it or not. So these are wildflowers of Eretz Yisrael. All these wonderful uh, resources. There are many other resources which um, are not particularly Jewish, but there's uh, very, very informative. Uh, Nature Cross Sections, this is really excellent. It's by Richard Oras, and it's by DK Press. That's a very famous press. They've got on, on many elements in creation. Um, not from a Torah perspective per se, but it's still extremely informative. This book is actually fascinating, the intention experiment. This is a scientific experiment demonstrating that when you talk to trees and talk to vegetation, it actually affects the way it grows. So they've done experiments where they've spoken kindly, similar to what we showed you with Professor Moto with, with water. Um, but but what, is, what is really screaming out is the same as what we've been saying all along. The, the very same way that when you and I say a bracha, we are affecting the entire bria, and specifically the food or drink that we are making the blessing on. The same is true that when we talk, our physical surroundings, surroundings are affected by what we say, how we say it. So when we speak kindly, it actually affects vegetation around us. If I speak unkindly, it actually affects the vegetation around us. So this is actually a scientific experiment done based on what happens when you grow the same exact bean in two different environments. One is where people speak kindly and one is where people speak unkindly and see the difference in how these beans and stalks, vegetables actually grow. Mind-boggling. So it's called the intention experiment, where the essential uh, premise is that what you're thinking, your intent, is what's coming out of your mouth, and that actually affects the physical surroundings. Um, the author is Lynn McTaggart, and it's by FP Press, Free Press, FP Press. Free press. Um, the subtitle is Using Your Thoughts to Change Your Life and the World. That's really the bottom line there. So uh, this is really in the arena of animals. And there are some materials which uh, are Montessori, or Jewish Montessori in this particular case, where you've got um, a section. I'll let them all fall down here. Where you've got, here it says kosher animals. And over here says non-kosher animals. And then you take lots of different animals and uh, the children having learnt which animals are kosher and therefore which ones are not, um, they will then sort them out. So this is a sorting thing that you can do for uh, first graders, even pre-1A if you're really into it. And uh, this comes from Jewish Montessori. Um, it actually comes with a beautiful bag. It says behemoth, kosher, <laughs> kosher and non-kosher animals. So that's that there. And there's a... Uh, a similar tray for kosher fish. This actually belongs in the fifth day, where the, you've got a bag of different fish and you have to sort out where they belong, kosher or not kosher. So now we move to the zenith of the sixth day, and that's creation of man. There are many resources, again, from resources that you can use to really implant in the child this deep appreciation for the physical anatomy of the human body and when the child starts to realize the progression of the physical universe of, of a trillion or so galaxies and planet earth, mountains, canyons, mountain ranges, valleys, rivers, oceans and then come to the realization that all of these different elements in the physical world were created for Adam including all the trees, all the vegetation, all the animals, all the birds, all the insects, all the fish. Everything is for the benefit of man. And the purpose of man is not his human body, which we're going to look at 
seriously in a few moments, but really his mind, his soul. And that's where Torah comes in. But this is a, a beautiful way for children to start to get the picture that all of creation was for Adam to be a righteous individual. So let's look at some of the resources we have here. There's many, many physical resources, materials that you can buy online. Um, this is my uh, Skelly. I'm sorry, he's got a leg missing there. And his little kid over here is Skelly Jr. Um, here's what he was a little bit uh, before. Uh, all these are different parts of the body that you can actually pull out and reconstruct, uh, replace. So let me share with you, here's, here's an excellent book. I mentioned it over, uh, earlier from Rabbi Yitzhak uh, Zalman Jibs Shlita, um, uh, based on his Shi'urim on Adoin Haniflaois. And what you will see here is in the table of contents, I'm just going to read part of it. This is the human body. So he covers some of the Niflaois, the wonders of the Creator in various organs and parts of the body. The heart, the lungs, blood, temperature, air, um, process of breathing, the liver, the pancreas, um, the bile, blood clotting, liver, the teeth, um, the adrenaline, the kidneys, circulation of the blood, the uh, blood system, cells, uh, digestion, stress, skin, touch, uh, germs, the ear, the eyes, tongue, kidneys, uh, skull, spine, just to mention less than half of what's on this table of contents. So you, uh, you've got like a, a couple of pages for each one of these. So it's, it's brief, it's, it's terse, um, and it's loaded with content. And it's a great platform. You're not, you're not learning any of these in a huge amount of detail, but you're getting a Torah perspective of the Nifla Sabaira in each one of these. So that's a great resource. Another excellent resource is, is this DVD um, uh, called Designer Perfect. Uh, and, and they have a, a website which is being reconstructed right now um, called Designer World. And you'll find there Rabbi Pesach Kron interviewing a number of Frum doctors who are specialists in the following. When you put in this DVD or you watch it online, um, what will come up on screen is a bookshelf. And on the bookshelf are spines of lots of books. Uh, one says skin disease, the spine, the eye, your mouth, heart disease. Uh, lungs and breathing, the lungs respiratory system, pediatrics, uh, children's medicine, uh, neuroscience, the brain, the kidneys, the digestive system. It's amazing what you're going to find there. You click on any one of these spines of these books on that shelf, and what will come up is an interview with Rabbi Pesach Kron Shlita and a Frum doctor who's a specialist in that particular part of the human anatomy. And what you will hear there are some of the most amazing Nifla Sabaira, wonders of the Creator, that with all of today's modern medicine still defies and is beyond our understanding. How does this work? And the only real answer is, when you look at the design in its perfection of any one of these systems, the lymph system, the circular system, the blood system, the skeletal system, the muscular system, the respiratory system, any one of those on their own, as standalones, are enough to blow your mind. But when you look at how they work perfectly in absolute perfect harmony, it's beyond beyond. And so these doctors are describing how with all we know in modern science and medicine, we are still baffled by the Nifla Sabera. The Kodesh Baruch is the one who's actually powering all of this to work so perfectly together. And uh, these type of materials become the entree, the entrance into the most frequent blessing we say. Asher uh, Yatsa. So we can learn that bracha bi'iyun. That's not the place now to do, but we do cover that to some extent in tefillah. We talk about Asher Yatsa. When we learn uh, tefillah bi'iyun, you'll see that I think on DVD number three or four of uh, tefillah bi'iyun. But this is a great resource. Another resource is the uh, Arachim Seminar. Uh, Arachim has put out two DVDs, also from the same sponsor as that one, which is Shimshon Halpern, a, a friend and neighbor of mine. Um, he's the one who put out all the Ashe Yatza, famous Ashe Yatza posters you're, you're familiar, familiar with. You've seen them all around the world. These are put out by Rabbi uh, Shimshon Halpern. And uh, he sponsored The Daily Miracle. This is also from Arachim, which talks about Ashe Yatza. And then another one, uh, who created all these? Uh, who created these, sorry. Uh, you will find these on Designer 
uh, world, or Designer Perfect. Uh, yeah, it's called designerperfect.com, I believe. Uh, check it out over there. Um, share with you some other ma materials which are really helpful. Here is by a Frum author. This is actually a textbook for, for high schools, I believe. Uh, it's by Rivka Broner, and she covers the functions of life, process essential to human life. It's really excellent, and it's done in such a way that um, it's very sensitive to Torah values, and uh, there's nothing there that would be uh, objectionable. objectionable. Um, anatomy, physiology, life functions, cell theory, structure, cell division, transport in cells, cell spe uh, specialization, classification of disease, prevention of disease, structures of the respiratory system, me mechanics of breathing, disorders of respiratory system, uh, six nutrients, nutritional guidelines, digestive system, disorders of the digestive system, on and on. There's a lot of information. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm bringing out again and again is there's a lot of Torah information that covers human anatomy. That when you're teaching it, so hey, use the resources that we, ha we have in our world um, so that children are learning about the human anatomy from a Torah perspective. So that's an excellent resource. And uh, we, you'll also probably be familiar with this book that came out based on Rabbi Victor Miller, Blessed Memory, uh, Your Walking, Talking Body. So this is by Rabbi Yeshaya Perlow, and, or Perlow, and it's a question and answer book based on the teachings of Rabbi Victor Miller. And it goes through different, uh, different functions of the human body as a platform for gratitude, appreciation, admiration for its designer. Uh, it's beautifully illustrated, very simply written, and this is for young children. <coughs> Highly recommended. Um, similar to what we're describing is that once you're taking your body more seriously, we have to talk about health. So one of the most excellent books that's been put out, I think that's very comprehensive, is um, To Your Health. It's in English, but it's, it's originally from Hebrew. Um, and it's by, uh, in Hebrew, it's called Hayim Berim Kahalacha. And uh, it's the Torah way to a healthy lifestyle in modern times by Yechezkel Eshayek. Um, he was actually the, the medical attendant to Rup So um, it's got excellent information here based on Chazal, Rambam, Shulchan Aruch. Um, this is called Treat Yourself Right. It's by Rabbi Goldman, who did a lot of series on, uh, on different subjects. It's by uh, Targum Press. And he covers... Um, Torah guidelines for maintaining your health and safety. So all this is offshoots of uh, which literally means uh, 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 guard your soul exceedingly. But what, how do you guard your soul? You guard your soul, which is your mind, by taking care of your body so that you're not stressed out or feeding the mind with poisonous thinking, poisonous thoughts, hatred, jealousy, Resentment, desire for revenge. All, all, all these are poisons to the mind and to the body. Chazal tell us that. Actually, Shlomo HaMelech says it. Shlomo HaMelech says that um, jealousy is so poisonous, ur kavat samois kina, that kina, jealousy, actually rots the bones. Rabbeinu Yaina on that Pasuk, I think it's in Peregudala in Mishle, tells us that before it gets to the bones, jealousy and other mitzvahs, including Ka'as and, and Gaiva, um, and um, uh, Daiga, worry, anxiety, actually dissolve body fat. That's extraordinary. This is a Rishon. Rambam also brings that, by the way, in Hanhagas Abrius, that worry and Taivas, addictions, actually dissolve body fat. So, uh, it's a really important book to, book to, to learn uh, and study. Anything that has to do with Shmir Sanefe, Shmir Saguf, guarding your health is really an offshoot of respect for the anatomy, the perfection of God's creation in the human body in order that I take him seriously by taking my body seriously in order to guard my mind, guard my soul. So there's a lot on that subject. Um, a number of years ago, I put out a, a booklet called The Health Directives of Maimonides. It's called The Art of Healthy Living, and it's based on Rambam. I have a number of different makaras there, and um, it goes through the 23 directives of Rambam in Hilchestes, Perak Dalad, 
chapter 4 of the laws of attitudes, the laws of thinking. Um, there are other, are other resources. These are most of the he Jewish ones that I've shown you. Um, there's an excellent book here um, by Avram Yaakov Finkel. It's a treasure of rabbinic insights about the human anatomy. Um, in English, it's called In My Flesh, See God. It's by um, Aronson Press. And uh, it's a very thorough and, um, I would say, a scholarly work. This would be for children who are, let's say, high school uh, or as a resource for the teacher, a lot of information is available to you that will help show children that the Torah takes your body very seriously because God created it and therefore it's part of Hashem's design. There are many other books here um, that are not uh, Torah based but they're, they're good especially for children, basically Parev and uh, I will, I, I will ha give you a link um, for all of those uh, that you can, you can look at and decide which ones you would want to purchase, where to get it from. So we've covered the six days of creation. We've given you a, an overview of the integrated curriculum. At another time, I will cover the seventh day, which of course is Shabbos. It's also part of the integrated curriculum where we learn about the Lama Tes Malachas. Um, but for now, I hope that you've, got, you've, you've had some uh, taste of what is available out there, and I'm sure there's more as well. Um, and I'd be happy for you to let me know what, what else is out there. Um, that will help children have resources to learn about Briyasa Olam, the creation of Hashem's perfect world, and be astounded by Nifla Sabaira, the wonders of the Creator, and in doing so, realize how much He loves us so that I will reciprocate by wanting to do His Rotson out of pure love for His love for us. In the schus of the Avas Hashem that can come from the integrated curriculum we should all be zeicher merit to beautiful children and students to follow in Hashem's ways ad bias amashia bimhiram amenu amen